Hi everybody, welcome to Katie in the Morning and welcome to Hump Day. I am Katie Page, Director of Member Relations at the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. The other day we talked a little bit about um, how family members feel, uh, you, you know those overbearing family members that come into the home or to the setting uh, that are always over your shoulder trying to tell you what to do or complaining about something that wasn't done. I wanted to go into a little more detail today about putting yourself in other people's positions. Uh, let's start with the residents, first of all. Uh, as you grow older, well, as I grow older, I have a tendency not to feel my age. You know, I, I relive my experiences from younger years. I think I'm physically able to do more than what I am. Um, hilarious story. The other day, I went to drop my kids off at daycare and uh, to the daycare providers, girls were out in the front yard and they were like doing flips, you know, and tumbling around in the snow. And I was like, you guys want to see something? Because I used to be able to do front handsprings. Well, it turns out that Katie can't do that anymore. And I landed right on my rump roast. Uh, I left a beautiful little impression in the snow, but that's just an example of how I feel younger than what I am. Um, and with residents, it is the same way. They We don't know them the way that they know themselves. Uh, the things that they've experienced, the things that they've done in their life and what they see uh, when they look in the mirror is not a reflection of how they feel. So that's one of the things we have to keep in mind when we're putting ourselves in other people's positions. Uh, take for instance, let's say a 75 year old farmer um, was used to getting up at four or five o'clock in the morning to go out and feed the livestock and get the tractor tuned up and get the old truck running and you know go about his day. Well now when they come into a nursing setting or a care setting, um, a lot of times we don't want them up at four o'clock in the morning or it's not, um, it's not, uh, easy for us for them to be up, especially in dementia care units. Have you ever thought about the, what we call the tinkerers that get up in the middle of the night and go and take the dining room table apart when you're on your rounds and you come back and the things are all categorized in different sections and you're wondering what they were doing. Um, read up a little bit of their history, ask their family members what they did for hobbies, uh, what they did for a living, uh, that sort of thing. And it can, uh, it can unlock a whole lot of answers for you. Um, so just by putting yourself in that position, you can understand a lot about what they're trying to communicate and a lot about what they're doing and a lot about what they're feeling. You know, you can come from a six bedroom house down to a eight by 12 square, square room where you're trying to fit as many belongings and many personal, um, personal things into that room as you possibly can. There is no way that you can condense a lifetime out down into an eight by 12 room. So they're definitely going to be missing some of the, the memorabilia that the, their old house, the view from their old house, people coming in and out visiting, you know, the grandchildren coming over and helping themselves to the cupboards. You ever wonder why some of our residents stockpile on snacks and, you know, they just have like this this hoarded drawer of everything, they may be waiting for their kids to come visit. They may be past the point where they understand that their their three and four year old granddaughter and grandson are now 29 and 30 years old and that they won't be coming over to rummage through their cupboard, but they don't know that. So let them have those memories. Let them those live out those, those memories and you know, it, what is it going to hurt really for them to have a, a drawer full of snacks? Uh, so that's just a an example of how to put yourself in the position of a resident. Um, so now let's move on a little bit. Let's go on to the staff. Um, you know, you have that, that one nurse who is constantly asking you what you're doing. Did you have this done? Did you have this done? Did you have this done? Well, if you think about it as a CNA or as a caregiver, we're responsible for our actions. Like that is pretty much the extent of it. We're not, we're not responsible for negative Nancy on hallway B. We're not responsible for, um, Judy over in the laundry department. We're responsible for us and us alone. But when it comes to like the nurses and the management team, and even all the way up to corporate, they are responsible for everybody that is working underneath them. Ner charge nurses are responsible for nurses. Nurses are responsible for the actions of CNAs. So when you have that overbearing nurse who is constantly nitpicking at you and asking if you have things done, it may not be something directly related to you. It just, their, their job is to, part of their job is to make sure that we're getting our job done. Um, by, and that's where it comes into play. The things we were talking about the other day about upping your professionalism by checking in and letting them know that you're getting th things done on a, a regular basis. That, that overbearing, uh, nurse who I used to refer to as nurse ratchet back in my floor working days, um, will eventually stop asking these questions because by reporting to them on a daily basis, they're understanding that you're getting everything done that you're responsible for, which also helps set that at ease. And if they're kind of on the crabby side, it may set them in a better mood as well. So now let's move on to the family members of the residents. Um, 
We talked about this the other day. It could be, there could be a relationship there that we don't know about. You know, CNA is going in day, day in, day out caring for people. We kind of see who comes in to visit them and who doesn't. And when we have a family member that lives, you know, six blocks away and never comes in to see her mom or dad, Lori talks about this in some of her segments of uh, Ask Lori Anything and in Pep Talks. You guys can look those both up on the NACA website. Under the members only section, you have access to all of the archived uh, episodes of both of those. But she talks about how the CNAs used to judge her because she'd bring a, a container of curly fries into her dad once a month and that's, or once a week or whatever it is, and then um, wouldn't come in to see him during the day. But the truth of the matter is, we don't know what the relationship is between the parents and their kids or the aunt and their nephew. They could have been like the worst parent in the world to them and we would have no idea. So, as those children are turning into grown adults and they may have a responsibility to come visit their loved one, but there's no saying that ne they necessarily want to. And who are we to judge that? We're there to care for them in the best way that we, that we can, um, but we're not there to judge the family members and the residents themselves. Um, and another way of looking at it is, uh, I'll give you guys an example of this one. And I know the other day I just gave you like four examples in a row, but I promise this is the only one. Uh, we had a resident uh, who came in um, and she was, I mean, off her rocker. I mean, probably stage two to stage three dementia, Alzheimer's. I mean, you guys know the, the, the stage that I'm talking about when they start hollering for people in the middle of the night that aren't really there and you took things from their room that wasn't necessarily taken, but... Uh, that's beside the point. So her son had cared for her at home for over 18 years. I mean, and he was like phenomenal. Cooked her gourmet meals, had her room and her house decked out. They went vacations. They went out once a week to eat. They went to see movies. They went to drive it. I mean, they did everything. He was a phenomenal caregiver to his mother. But then she got to the point where she couldn't walk anymore and had to use the Hoyer or the total lift for transfer. So he had no choice but to bring her in um, because their house wasn't big enough for them to even fit a Hoyer in because of all the decorating and the things that he'd bought his mom over the, over the years that he was absolutely not willing to give up and nor did she want him to. Anyways, that's beside the point. So he gets there and he brings in all this stuff from home. I'm talking flower bouquets, this bright green, um, um, just gorgeous bed setting, like uh, designer pillows. I mean, she had the works in her room. And for a while there, when he first started coming in, he'd come in every day, about three times a day. Um, he also did like dining, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, catering. Uh, and he'd bring in like like homemade chocolates and food for the CNAs and flowers that he'd done for weddings that people ended up not wanting or left over and didn't know what to do with. It was amazing. But there was a group of CNAs there that would constantly mock and harass, not harass, but mock and make fun of like the way her room looked about how overdone it was and everything. But just by putting yourself in that position, you can see from his eyes these are the things that he's still able to do for her. These are the things that he's still able to provide for her. This is a comfort that he can give to her. So who are we to judge? Once again, who are we to judge what he does and what she allows him to do for her? Um, so anyways, I got a little bit off topic there, but just by putting yourself in that position of him being at home and caring for her for all those years to going to the limited amount of things that he can do for her, like I said, this is something that he could do. So the next time that you're kind of um, frustrated, whether it is a family member, whether it is a coworker, whether it is a resident, um, just kind of put yourself in their position, see it from their view. And I almost guarantee you that will open up a whole new side for the situation and ways that you can deal with it. I thank you guys all for joining me today. And I will see you next time on Katie in the Morning.